All of God's people said, Did you bring a Bible? You're going to need it. James chapter 2, turn there. Once again, I appreciate everybody being here this morning. I appreciate those of you gathered with us online. We love you. Thank God for you. And uh, we pray for you. We're glad and we're thankful that you pray for us. Uh, What a blessing it is to come in and to get a phone call from somebody that says, uh, Pastor Mike, uh, you and Sweetie Pie and your church are in our prayers every single day. And I really appreciate that. I really do. Uh, We wouldn't be here. None of us would be here without it. Um, The things that God has us doing... You know, I keep sharing this, but I, I, think, I think we need to hear it from time to time. The things that God has us doing are huge things. I don't, you know, God makes all churches different. They all reach out in different ways and do different things. I understand that. But I've never, I've never, I've never seen a church as small as it is locally be able to reach out internationally the way God has allowed us to do that. I know the internet has a lot to do with that. And um, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. If they, something happens, shut the internet down. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I don't, they seem to be making it faster, not shutting it down. But, um, but I got sinister ideas about that anyway. But anyway, um, when you're doing the work of the Lord, I've known this for years, there's always going to be a target on your back. Always. The fiery darts are going to be hurled at you. And it's going, to, it's going to hurt you. It's going to challenge you. It's going to try you. And if you'll keep standing by the blood, keep standing by the old book, by the old rugged cross, uh, God will help you through that. I promise you, you will. It's happened to me numerous times. Numerous times. So continue to pray for us, pray for me, pray for my family, as I pray for yours and pray for you. And uh, let's take heed to what God tells us in this book. I want Bethel Church, I mean, I'm, I'm challenged a lot. Some say, yes, Pastor Mike, we've known that about you for a long time. You're very challenged. <laughs> You're right, I got a lot to deal with. But... God always challenges me to never look behind at what you did, to look ahead at what you haven't done yet. And um, that's not my nature. So I know it's, I know it's from God. But I, I want to really encourage and try to move this church into not just saying amen to a sermon, but to do what God said to do. James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, destitute of daily food, Notice that he said brother or sister, not a stranger. If we can't even do this in our own house, why would we think we would do it to a stranger? So he's he's talking about your own house. If your brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. I'm going to interject something here. Let me, let's go to the Lord in prayer before I start preaching. Father, help me to preach this message. Help me to say what is right. Father, I want it to come from heaven, not from me. 
I pray, dear God, that you deliver it to the saints. God, speak to us, all of us, from the pulpit on down to the pew. God, deal with us, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Brother, our brother Roy is here, and he knows about this a little bit. Uh, Roy, uh, for years, went to AA meetings. And he learned quite a bit about human nature at those meetings. You always have some people who go to AA meeting and say, I don't have a problem drinking. That's denial. And that's the way it is in churches sometimes. People just deny that they have an issue, deny that they have a problem, and don't want to face it, don't want to deal with it. Then my question is, why are you at an AA meeting? You're at an AA meeting because you're drunk. And that's, you said that's slanderous language. No, that's Bible language. You're drunk. You're slobbering drunk. And it is a problem. Just ask everybody that knows you. It's a problem. Yeah. So then, Roy will tell you, you'll get people there that will make every promise in the book. Oh, I'm not going to drink no more. I'm done with that. That's, that's over with. Oh, and, and at, after two meetings, they're already an expert on what an alcoholic is, what a drunk is, and they come to the conclusion they don't need the meetings anymore. You know what that is? That is faith without works. It's dead. Because this man will tell you, anybody else will tell you, if they've ever been to AA, Dope Heads Anonymous, Perverts Anonymous, whatever group it was, that they go there, they make promises, they say I'm cured, they say I'm better, I'm fine, everything's okay, drop out and keep drinking. So, when they say, a couple of you probably know this, you probably have pulled people over, found drugs in their car, when after they said, oh, I'm going to rehab. Okay. See, I watch cops. I watch live PD. I, I see these guys. They're lying through their teeth. I sat with a man one time who is a friend of mine, been since childhood. We grew up together in this church. He was arrested on probation violation for drugs. And I mean, he had to show up in court and he was pretty sure that at the end of court, he was going to have to put on an orange jumpsuit and take a ride down to Bonterre. And that is exactly what happened. Because you know what he said? When his lawyer got him up on the stand, his lawyer gave him all these softball questions. And he said, you know, why should you, why should you continue to go on and, and be on probation? And he said, because I successfully completed the, the drug uh, treatment deal. I successfully completed it. Well, the prosecutor got up and said, it's not successful if you're still peeing dirty. It's not successful if you're still taking drugs. So that's saying one thing, but you are something else. Right? And guess what happened? He went to prison for three years. Probation violation. Even a lost criminal justice system agrees with James chapter 2 on this deal. Because they know how it works. You, show, you say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I'll show thee my faith by my works. You know what makes a successful drunk? A successful drunk doesn't drink. He don't drink no more. It ain't that he don't deal with it. It ain't that he don't want to. He just don't do it. Verse 19. Thou that believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man. Listen, who, listen he's talking to you guys. He's talking to us. He's talking to me. Vain man. That faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Did not Abraham believe what God said? Yes. How do we know he believed what God said? He offered up Isaac. 
Verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. If you write anything on my tombstone, I would like for it to be said, a friend of God. And not anything else. You see then how that by works, a man is justified, and not by faith only. It is not about what I say. It is about whether I do what I say. And I made that personal on purpose. And I'm going to say this again. I said it to you last week. I'll say it this week. I'm preaching to me. I'm preaching to my family. And I'm preaching to my church. And anybody else that will listen. But this is for me. This is for us. And all y'all. And if you sit and roll through your mind about how many people you think are destitute of this. And do not think of yourself. You're getting this all wrong. This Bible lays down guidelines for life that we are to live by. We are to examine our own selves to see whether we be in the faith or not. Not use this as a whip to go after somebody else when you yourself are not doing what you say. You do the talk, you do the walk. That's, that's uh, the James something another. It's in there. Verse 24, you see then how that faith works, uh, man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot? Now look at this. Abraham, we see him as righteous. But now we got a slut. A harlot. An adulteress. A dirty, nasty woman. Sleeps with men. What kind of example is that? She believed the two guys that God sent. Can God save sinners? Can God justify unrighteous people? Only if they'll believe. Now, Rahab could have been your typical church member who when the two witnesses came to her, the two spies... And they told her that, you know, God's going God's to judge this place and everybody here is going to die. She could have said, Amen. I know all these men in this town. They're wicked. Well, you are too because you're the one sleeping with them. Amen. Amen. That's good preaching because these men are wicked. This town's wicked. This town deserves to go to hell. Oh, I believe you guys. Well, if she believed them, then she would have acted upon what she said she believed. So what's her testimony? Is her testimony that she said amen to the sermon, said she believed what the two, you know, the two witnesses, that's Old New Testament, that's Christ coming first time, second time, that's God sending people to you? If she said, what's her testimony? Did she say, I, yes, I believe that, but did nothing? Because I'm telling you, had it not been for the scarlet cord over her door, the army of Israel would have slaughtered her, her mama and daddy, and maybe even her children, everybody in that house. God, that God's people would have slaughtered her and her whole house. While her saying, oh, I believe what God said. But she didn't hang the scarlet cord out. That scarlet cord is the blood of Christ that justifies the harlots. Now, there might have been some people either inside of Israel or inside Jericho that would have said, How dare a woman like that be saved? Uh, it's the woman like that that needs to be saved. God, uh, let me read the rest of this. 
Was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so with faith without works is dead. I want you to look in your Bible at Matthew chapter 1. I want to show you something. Is it Matthew 1 or Luke 3? Which one is it? Where's her name showing up? One of the genealogies of Christ. Luke, chapter 3. I knew it had to be Luke when I didn't see it in Matthew. I knew I was close. Look at Luke, chapter 3. Her name shows up. Somebody help me find it real quick. B R A C H A B something like that. Anyway, when you ask Jesus who his grandmother was, Matthew one five. I see. I knew it was in Matthew. Yeah, Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. Rahab. Ask Jesus who his great grandmother was. He said a harlot. Now, when I picture my great-grandmother, that's not the word that comes to my mind. She's a godly woman. But her name, God honored her by putting her name in as one of the mothers of our Savior, Jesus Christ. While everybody else may say it's not fair... That a harlot gets justified. She's the one that believed. And acted upon that belief. Because the two, two witnesses said. Hang the scarlet cord over your door. And when we come in. We're going to come in slaughtering everything that, that moves inside this town. If we see that scarlet cord. We'll spare whoever's behind this door. But if it's not there. We're going to come in and kill you. But God spared the woman. And she was justified, not just by what she said, but what she did. Can I hear you say amen? Romans 2.13, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. 1 Corinthians 4.20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That means action, movement. The kingdom of God is not just saying, Lord, Lord, or amen, amen. The kingdom of God is that when we say we believe what God said, then we let God act in us what He said He wanted to do in us. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Some of this I may have covered last Sunday, but I'm building up. There's actually a story that Jesus told about this very thing. Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace... Say this out loud with me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Is that a contradiction? No. Verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The world, the world knows a phony Christian when it sees one. So does God. No, I don't believe you work to get saved. But you're saved to work. I mean, God gave us an example. He gave us six days, right? Six days to do all of our labor, seventh day the rest. The seventh day, the seventh day hasn't happened yet. Our time to lay down and do nothing is not yet. Our time to get up and work and do what God said to do is now. But again, you see, that really is the work of God. Because let me tell you how this really works. You know, I could preach it like, well, if you don't get up and do something, then you're not doing, you know, you're not saying that you're, you're saying one thing, not doing, you're a hypocrite or this or that or the other. But what I really believe, and what I really believe God does is, those who are doing what they say they believe, 
That is God working through them to show everybody that they really do believe what they say they believe. Which means that people who don't do what God says in this book, God is not doing in them what's in this book. Do you know why? God knows they're a hypocrite. Does that make sense? See, it's all about what God does in you. And if God is doing and causing you to be faithful and to act faithful, that is the sign that God sees you as faithful. That's why He will say to you, well done. Done is a do word. Thou good and... He connected it together. But the hypocrites... God won't do in you what you say you are. He won't. Because He knows you're lying through your teeth. That's, that's what that is. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, look, look up here on the screen. Hang on a second. Okay. Exodus 23, 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then will I be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Leviticus 19, 37. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. Now, 20 verses up here. I found 20 verses exclusively in the law of Moses where God said keep my statutes and do my statutes 20 times that's why this is so little so I put them all on one little screen I'm not going to read all these you can you can get the pure Bible search software you can look this up just look at just look at the word obey or do. Or commandments. You read through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And you'll see in there where God repeatedly says, keep and do. Keep and obey. Keep and do. Here's what some of them say. Therefore shall you keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. You know what he's saying? I'm not Baal. I'm not the God that lets you be a hypocrite and live how you want to live. But offer me a little sacrifice out then and then you'll be okay. I'm not that God. I am the God that knows you and watches you. Number 1540. That you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. We have forgotten what holiness is about. True biblical holiness. Deuteronomy 4, 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Why? Because they not only received the law, but they did what God told them to do. Because even your neighbors know. Even your neighbors know. Can I ask the question, what do your neighbors know about you? What do your neighbors know about how you really live? Do they see the empty beer cans? Do they see... Strange cars at your house? Do they hear through the walls what's going on in your home? What do your neighbors know? Because your neighbors will either say of you, you know, I ain't much of a God-fearing man, but I know they're devout Christians. They, they'll say they know that. Or they'll say, yeah, they keep inviting me to that church, but some of the stuff I hear going on over there, I ain't, I ain't going to that church. Am I right? 
Deuteronomy 29, 9, Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. So you tell me why things are not working all that well. I mean, over in Psalm 1, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law doth He meditate day and night, and He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth His fruit in His season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever He doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. See, he puts a difference in this verse between those who not only know the Bible, but God is doing through them what's in the Bible. So, when a person sends money who we have never met to this church, to give to the widows of this church. And they don't want nobody to know they did it. That was God that did that. Was it not? I didn't tell anybody to do that. I did not get on P Pastor Mike online and say, I want, to, I want everybody to send $5 a piece to all of our widows so I can look good. They just, they just did it. God laid it on their heart. He moved in them and they did it. When we started feeding the people, all of a sudden, God started landing on people's hearts to send money for that. I've never asked for a dime. I have never asked for a dime for this. That was God doing it in them and through them. They'll get their reward one of these days. There's one person beyond these walls that's $5,000 short. Because they sent it here to feed people. God will bless them. Now, I'm not comparing one with another. Because God may have you do this much, or God may have you do this much. It depends on what God wants to do. But even this much is better than nothing. Is it not? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. See it? That's New Testament, not Old Testament. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So let me ask this question. You say, oh, I believe the Bible. When's the last time you read it? See, it's a manifestation. Always is. You say you believe the Bible... But you ain't touched it. You know why? You're doing evil and you hate the light. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So let me ask it this way. What is it that you're doing that you're hiding? Is that a fair question? Don't stand up and answer. <laughs> what is it you're doing that you're hiding? That you don't want everybody to find out about? That's a fair question, isn't it? Because that's showing that you are not what you say you are. John 15, 10, if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. You know, see, Jesus said, keep my commandments. There's only two of them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love thy neighbor as thyself. I had to apologize to a guy is actually a lawyer. Because I got rude and ignorant to him with my mouth to his face. Because he got rude and ignorant with me first. Right? So a week later I saw him and he walked by once and God said, you're going to stand up and apologize to that man. And I went, no, I'm not. 
And you know what happened when he walked by the second time? I stood up. And I said, sir, he turned around and I said, I was very rude to you last week and I sincerely apologize. Will you forgive me? And he said, I was rude to you also. Will you forgive me? <laughs> Done. I did not want to do that. And I'm just, I'm not bragging. What I'm telling you is, that's what this Bible says for us to do. We're supposed to love people, including lawyers. <laughs> Now look up here. Because after this, we're going, to, we're going to deal with hypocrites. But here is who the hypocrites are. A hypocrite is a husband or wife who says, I love you. But, they're running out on each other, using one for a punching bag, using one to slur publicly and privately, roaming eyes looking at everything else and what everything else is going on and what, what a younger woman or a younger man might be to you. Not showing love, true, genuine love. So you say I love you, but you're a hypocrite. A child that says, yes mom, I'll do it. But doesn't do it. Doesn't immediately do it. Yes, mom. Mom says, don't go over to that people's house over there. Yes, mom. And that's where you are. Mom says, they drank over there and I don't want you over there, but you're over there and you're going to drink. You adult, somebody raise your hand. That happened to you. You've, you've done that. I'm not looking. Go ahead. Child says, yes, mom. Yes, dad but then rebels against everything they tell him to do, runs around telling everybody how ignorant his mom and dad are. That's a hypocrite. A witness who gets on the witness stand, puts her hand on a Bible or nothing and says, I, I swear, I do, and then lies through their teeth because they swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, but they have every intention on lying. That's a hypocrite. It's actually illegal. A politician who says, I swear to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. But once they're in office, they do everything to destroy the Constitution of America. That's a hypocrite. Yeah. A citizen who says, I will obey the law. I don't need to be monitored. Yes, you do. We're living in a monitored society because we deserve it. There aren't very many citizens who actually obey the law anymore. How many people do we know now that smoke dope? Lots of them. A saint who says, I will be faithful. But they don't. What you say you're going to be will always be manifested in what you do. And that shows that you are who you say you are. And again... The absence of you doing what you know the Bible says to do is the sign that God refuses to do it in you to show you you're a hypocrite, to show everybody else you are. The absence 
of you refusing to do what God said don't do, but you go ahead and do it anyway? See, here's, here's what my problem is with God's people in general. If I were to ask everybody in this church, should we get rid of our King James, go to NIV, what would our unanimous vote be? No, keeping our King James. That's good. But if your King James specifically says do something and you don't do it or if our King James says specifically word for word don't do this and you do it and then you justify it that's where I have a problem because I could have us all stand if if we have, since we've been saved, done what God told us not to do, I would be the first to stand. But I can never, ever justify it. If I did it, and God said it was wrong, I have to repent. See, repentance is part of the work of God in you. The Bible says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation that needeth not to be repented of. Is that what the Bible says? So, the evidence of, of you saying, I believe what God said. Now you go out and break what God said. But God works that sorrow in you and you say, I'm sorry God, I'm sorry. God, take this away from me. God, I'm tired of this. That's a, that's a godly man. Psalm 32 says it's a godly man who will repent. Ecclesiastes, I think it says, a just man falls seven times. Gets back up. But it's the people who knowingly go against God's word. but then act as if they were right, which says the Bible's wrong. And we say we believe the Bible, but we deliberately do what God said don't do, and we deliberately don't do what God said to do, and then we never repent of it. We act like it's not wrong. That's a big problem. It's a problem, I would say, in every church. It's a condition that can only be healed by God. And whether God will work that sorrow in you is not up to me. Because God knows that I have enough to worry about with my own sorrow. So I'm not, again, I'm going to say it again. I'm not preaching down to anybody. But even what I'm guilty of, I have to preach it. I have to. Or then I would be the hypocrite. And you would be justified. Now turn to Matthew 21 and I'm going to let you go on this one. This is the, this is the, the story Jesus told that, that shows you this. I like that sound. I like how God make Bible pages sound like Reynolds rap. That way you know everybody's getting their Bible out. So Matthew 21, 28. Jesus said, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons. So he's going to be two examples here. 
And my question to everybody in here is, which son are you? Which son are you? He came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he did what? He repented. And to show that he was truly sorry, he got up out of his lazy bed, turned the TV off, put the pizza in the fridge, and went out and worked. Because that's how you know you're really sorry. Roy, what do they tell you in AA? If you've done somebody wrong? Because if you're really sorry, you won't just say, you know, that's 10 years ago. I'm going to just, they, they should just get over it by now. They do not tell you that. Now, I can't say that I agree with everything that goes on at an AA meeting, but that one's right. If you're really sorry, try to go make it right. You may not be able to. They may not be able to let it go, but at least you're free. So, if the son really is sorry that he disobeyed his father... Then he repents and goes and does what his father did. He doesn't just keep doing what his father told him not to do. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. They say unto him the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots, Rahab, Right? The woman caught in adultery, the publicans, those are the beer joint guys, the pool hall guys, public houses, pubs, the publicans and the harlots, go into the kingdom of God before you, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness and you believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. So... There's no way in the world I can preach this message and tell you, don't you ever mess up now from here to eternity. Don't you dare mess up no more. I can't say that. Because God would make sure that I'd be the first one to mess up. But I'm telling you, at some point, God's going to work sorrow in you and you're going to come to a place where you wish you had never done that. And you're going to get mad at the devil. And you're going to get mad at sin. You're going to rise up and say, you know what? I'm going to move. I, want, I took three steps back. I'm going to take four steps forward today. Devil, push me down all you want to. I'm getting back up. I'm not quitting. I'm not a hypocrite. And you're not if you'll repent. And then get up and do what your father told you to do. It's the purpose of the, of the rod, is it not? The rod chastens, the rod rebukes. It's the reason for it. To make us sorry. And if you won't let God do that, You'll be the bastard of Bethel Church. I'm real tempted to make that the name of the message on Sermon Audio tomorrow. See how that goes over. It's, it's in the Bible, so... I want us to bow our heads. I said, Pastor Mike, you sound like you're burdened. You have no idea. I, I listen. I want this, this is my heart to my church. I said it a while ago. We have a huge target on us. I know I do, and there have been times, and I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. Where I came close. To leaving here. So that the devils would follow me. 
and leave you guys alone. Because I always feel responsible for when things go bad in your life. And I'm feeling that way today. I'd like for our church to be right with God and for people to see it. But I can only I can only examine me. It's all I have a right to do. So let each one examine himself. Not somebody else, not who you think I was talking to, or not who you think I should have been talking to, but yourself. Measure your judgments, your actions, your deeds, your words. Did you do right? Were you who you told everybody else you were? Father, I come before you today. I love you very much, Father. My life is yours. My mouth, my actions, my mind, my heart, it's yours. And God, you have every right to bring me down. It is by your grace only that you raise me up. I love these people. But I don't love them more than I love right ways. So Father, I want me to be right. You know what I've asked you, Father. And I meant it. And I still mean it. I want that. I want it more than I want anything. So, Father, I pray, dear God, you would help Mike Hoggard today. Help Mike Hoggard to not be a hypocrite. Help Mike Hoggard to read more, study more, do right more, and do wrong less until you have perfected me where I'm wrong, Father, chasten me hard, hard enough so that I don't do it again. And chasing me often enough until you drive the foolishness out of me. Help me to love like I say I love. Help me to care like I say I care. Help me to be what I preach and not be a hypocrite. Father, forgive me. And I pray, God, that you would help others forgive me. And then, Father, I pray, God, that you would help my family. Help them to be what I want them to, what you want them to be. Make them right. And the people in this church, Father, please, make them right. 
There's a work to be done. Mouths to be fed. People to be comforted. Sick people to be helped. Lost people to be saved. Lord, please help our church continue to do that. But only, Father, if we're right and we are who we say we are. And Father, help each one to examine himself and himself alone. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for preaching to us today. We needed it. Bless your word, I pray, in Jesus' name. All of God's people said,